Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. You know, when Elsa was giving her testimony, I remember one time I was driving from home to, from Mombasa, and I was going home, and I was driving in the night. And that time, the Mombasa Nairobi road was so bad, it had so many potholes, and cars were being uh, kajaked. But I was all alone, and at one time, I remember hitting a pothole so hard, all my lights went off. I wondered, how do I stop in the middle of Savo? I said, I will drive. God, you will be my light. I kept driving. Then I hit another pothole and all the lights came on again. And I said, glory be to God. And I reached my destination safe. Hallelujah. The Lord is good, my brothers and sisters. I am humbled to be with you again this evening. I am honored to really stand on the pulpit to speak the name of God, the Most High all glorious, all powerful, that today I am here disseminating his word to his people. It's the most humbling experience. And I thank you all for finding time to be here. And all of us who are also watching online, I thank you for finding time to watch through this session. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will truly interpret the words that the Lord has for us personally and to each one of us. We thank the Lord. I am extremely excited today because I have a very, very dear friend in this congregation. She is here, and I want her to lift her hands and just greet the congregation. Juma, 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 and she has come with her sister. Hallelujah. I have friends. That's a very dear friend. She worships at Kenhart, and when she heard I was here, she said she has to come and be with us. So we thank you for finding time to come and worship with us, Juma. It, remind, it confirms to me that I have a friend in you. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Glorious, merciful Father, once more we are coming into your presence. Once more we are pleading for the infilling and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon us. Once more, we are humbly asking you, Lord, to speak through me. And may I just be the nail and you be the picture. That all I say, Father, will be purposed towards strengthening, rebuking, correcting your children and making each one of us ready. May any form of destruction be destroyed in Jesus' name. And may all the hearts that could be hardened be softened by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, interpret these words unto each one of us personally. And now I pray that I decrease as you increase. Take over, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Hallelujah. Today's topic, our theme still runs, priorities of faith, and we are in day nine. Day nine. We are done. Tomorrow we are done. Day nine. Uh, for those who have the booklet and could be following, I have interchanged yesterday's sermon to today's sermon. Um, it just happened as I was preparing. I'm sure the Lord knows why. And so I am on the 10th topic of what you have on your booklet, but uh, for day nine, which is be rich in what matters. Be more analog. Be rich in what matters. And our reading comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 24 to 25, that says, And let us consider how we stir up one another. Let us consider how we stir up one another to love and good works. I need you and you need me in this walk of life so that together we can encourage each other we can help each other grow 
in love and good works. Bwana sifiwe. Tell your neighbor, I need you in this walk of life. Some people are not saying, spirit of stubbornness, I bind you in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit of stubbornness here, I destroy you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I need you. I need you in my walk of life, in my walk of faith. I need you. Don't walk around the church and the world like you are enough. You're not enough. You need the person sitting next to you. Hallelujah. Buona sifiwe. And not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the days drawing nigh. And the truth is, the days are drawing nigh. As we speak now, the latter rain, the latter rain, the latter rain, the latter rain has already started falling. And it is falling on people, on people who have not neglected to meet together. It is falling on people who are encouraging one another in love and in good works. It is, it is falling on people who are encouraging one another day by day. The days are drawing nigh. Where we are today, my brothers and sisters, the latter rain is falling. It is only falling on people who are persistent, persistent in fellowship. Hallelujah. If I asked you today to define what you understand by being rich. And this I want from the congregation. Rich. What do you understand when you hear, Melissa eh, and is rich. Eh? What comes to your mind? She's moneyed. Hello? Right? What else? A big car. Eh, not this canjueles, canjueles. Not <laughs> a big car. A big car. That the person is spinning a V8. The person is spinning eh, a ZX. The, eh, the person is spinning a Lexus. Hello, hello. You look at the person and you say, rich. Those cars that when you meet on the road and you have your canjueles and they you could go and you give way very quickly. Because if you knock them, you cannot... <laughs> Hey, the person is swinging me, is, is spinning a Mercedes. What else? Money, big car. What else? Has a lavish life. Is able to afford what they want. You hear tomorrow they are in Dubai. So where are you going to be? I'm going to Dubai. And where are you going to be? I'm going to America. No, 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 no. I'm taking my child to uh, to China. No, no, no. When the other one to, hey, hey, my friend, they can do what they want, when they want, and how they want. Hello, hello. He, nyinyi munangoja kuja Mombasa holiday once a year. Tena una save. Yeye, April, Mombasa holiday. August, Mombasa holiday. December, apana, sasa ni Dubai. Rich. What else? Say it aloud. Property. The person has property. You get into their houses and you say, well, la, 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 la. You've gone to, I've gone into some houses. You get in and you, first of all, at the door, you, you start wondering, where? What? You sit on the chair and you don't sit. You sit kidogo kwanza. Is when you find your space pole pole as you get easier. <laughs> because they are rich. Hallelujah. When it comes to material wealth, I often ask myself how much money is really enough. When I see the way corruption has taken over our country and people are amassing wealth the other day, I saw Honorable Dismas Baraza launch a helicopter. Hey, I say, what? A man born of a woman buys a helicopter. He has produced like over 100, 200 million cash. 
and you are looking for fees to go and pay of 20,000. That person is rich. But I wondered how much more do people have want? Somebody has a house in Mombasa, a house in Nairobi, a house at home, a house in Kericho, a yard or a farm and a ranch to do where and to do a home in Britain and they keep amassing and amassing and amassing and I keep wondering how much do people want? How much money can be enough? That you'd even say, I've had enough now. This other one can do all God's work. Wapi injili napelekwa? Turkana. Instead of building a house in, 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 in uh, Kericho now, I have houses all over. Chukua hii milioni shirini. Enda ujenge kanisa Turkana. Hallelujah. I'm wondering when Christians will get to that level. Instead of amassing and amassing. And at the end of the day, you never really enjoy. By many people's standards, we would refer to such people as rich, like you have clearly says. When he owns what you claim he owns. Many of us think and feel that riches is always t is tied to your bank account. But today we want to find out what God defines as rich. Hallelujah. So that by the end of this message, each one of us will walk through that door telling yourself, I am rich. It's not a preserve of those who have properties, who have homes, who can go to holidays. No, on holiday, it is a preserve for a child of God. Hallelujah. Buena sifiwe. My brothers and sisters, being rich in what matters in God's eye is what is real richness. Being rich in what matters in God's eye is the real riches that a man should have. Hallelujah. 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 And you know when you're rich in what matters in God, God's eye, you are called blessed. When I have a car and I have property, my brothers, yes, those are good things that have happened to you. And yes, they come through as blessings. But the real blessings is being rich in God's eye. Hallelujah. And it is about the intangibles expressed in the tangibles. It's about the intangibles expressed in the tangibles. Buona sifiwe. Buona sifiwe. The tangibles, the intangibles that I'm talking about is expressed in Psalms 112 verse 1. Can somebody read it? Psalms 112 verse 1. Thank you, elder. A lot of us equate being rich to being blessed. And that's what I want to keep playing with these two words together. Being rich, being blessed. Being rich, being blessed. Because if you hear somebody, oh, I am blessed. God has given me a car. Yes, you're blessed. Yes, you're rich. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, Yes. Praise you, the Lord. Uh-uh. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, uh -huh. that delights greatly in his commandments. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. Fearing the Lord here means or holding him in awe, respect, honor. Blessed is the man who honors the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. Blessed is the man who respects the Lord. Blessed. Rich is the man who fears the Lord. Rich is the man who honors the Lord. Rich is the man who holds the Lord in all. You can have your cars. You can have your houses. You can have your pieces of land. You can have what you have. But you're not rich. The man who honors, respects, and fears the Lord is richer than you. 
Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord and delights greatly in his commandments. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord and delights. Yani he is happy. He is excited about the commandments of the Lord. He is happy about them. And when you're happy about something, you want to test it. You want to use it. Is that true? Bwana sifiwe. Bwana sifiwe. By the way, while I was reading this verse and preparing, it came to me, one, one issue came into my mind. That the man, can I have four people here? This is commercial break. Four people here. A woman and a man, a woman and a man. Four. Papa. Thank you, darling. Amen. Grace. Ah, yeah. One woman and a man there, one woman and a man here. Good. Man, mama mbele, woman mbele. Where was mama mbele? Yes, correct. The Lord says and tells us this. I want to remind the church today because I realize it is people are losing it because of what do you call it? They are you don't know, you don't know Kiswahili. Enlightened. You know, they are classy. So they think that some of these things that the Lord said in his word are for the low. Hmm? Those low. Those ones who, who have not gone to school. But I want to tell you that the Lord says that the man is the head of the house. Is somebody hearing me? Is somebody hearing me? The word of the Lord says that the Lord is the head. The man is the head of the house. Whether you want to accept it or not. Or whether you think you are too schooled and you are, you are the one who has too much money. So you are the one who is paying the bills. You are the one who is paying the fees. You are the one who has built the house. And so you think that gives you the authority of headship. You are lost in your head. The man as per the word of God. Whether he has nothing. Whether he can provide or not. Because the headship of a man is not based on his ability to provide. It is based on God's creation and the principles of marriage as he started it. Hello. So you woman who thinks that you have a lot of money, so you can walk and reign all over your man, you are only bringing curses to your children. Is somebody hearing me? Is somebody hearing me? There's a reason the Lord has asked me to bring this. In the middle of this sermon. Hello, hello. Buena sifiwe. And let me confirm to you that this man is the head. In Ephesians, he says, Therefore, man, these people are not married. So if this is your wife and I am using her as a sample with another man, please don't go and beat her and start. Why did you stand up? And you know that is not your wife. Don't bring maneno mali akuna maneno. Buena sifiwe. And the man shall love his wife. As Christ, he stands for Christ. And he stands the man, you, you, husband, you husband here. And the husband shall love the wife. Don't smile because this is not your husband. <laughs> <laughs> the husband shall love the wife as Christ loves the church. So therefore... The man and Christ have been put at one. Is somebody seeing this? They have been compared because the man has been given headship of the home the way Christ has been given headship of the church. So they say and the wife submits as the church submits. So the wife has been equated to who? Buona sifiwe. 
Bwana asifiwe. So my brothers and sisters, even as you go about your duties, even as you rise in state statutes and you become a CEO, you become a CS, you become a president. When you get to your house, your man takes leadership. I want that to sink. Because when our squeeze we make a bit chuangumu. They think that it is money in their pocket that gives them headship. This is headship given by God. Hallelujah. God bless you. I don't know why that came in. The Lord says that he who delights greatly in his commandments, which is summed up in two sections. Love the Lord your God with all your hearts. And your neighbor as yourself. Hallelujah. Love the Lord your God with all your What I want to figure much on or to dwell much on through this message is and your neighbor as yourself. Now these are the intangibles. And these intangibles, loving the Lord, fearing God, loving the Lord with all your heart and mind, and delighting in his commandments are the intangibles, which now must be manifested in tangible practices. Is somebody hearing me? Somebody is not hearing me, Awa. Is somebody hearing me? Yes. I hear now voices. Intangible practices. The intangibles. And I want you to remember the intangibles. What are the intangibles? Fearing the Lord. Amen? Amen. And delighting in his commandments. And his commandments are summed up in two things. Love the Lord your God with all your hearts. And love your neighbor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The tangibles is what we want to delve in. Analog spirituality. That's where we must go. Because it is in analog spirituality that we find the tangibles. Is somebody hearing? It is in analog spirituality. Analog that we find and practice and manifest the intangibles. Are we together? Buona mm. sifiwe. And biblical spirituality is analog, not digital. Not digital. It is based on personal and tangible practices between real people and a living God. Hallelujah. But the basis is intangible spirituality, which we say for you to practice the tangible spirituality, there is the intangible, which I will keep referring to. It is fear the Lord and delight in his commandments. And delighting his commandments is in two sections. Love the Lord and love your neighbor. Are we together? Buona sifiwe. And this is about choices. The Lord has put it out there for you. But you choose. You choose whether you want to continue being analog or you want to continue being digital. Hello, hello. And we are reminded in Deuteronomy 30, 19. What are we reminded? Elder, you mumbled. It says, it says, I call heaven and earth. I call heaven and earth. As witness this day against you. As witness this day against you. That I have set before you life and death. I have set before you life and death. Be I have set before you today tangible and analog and choose ye today. And the Blessing and cursing. Blessings and curses. Therefore choose life. 
Therefore choose life. That both you and your descendants may live. That, but that both you and your descendants may live. I want to remind you that the Lord said, fear him. And eh? ah, and, and delight in his commandments. And his commandment is love God and love your neighbor. That is what you're manifesting when you practice the tangible aspects of your spiritual life. While God of the Bible is invisible to the human eye, he has called us to practice specific things which are analog in nature and that will express our relationship with him. He has called us to practice spe specific things which are analog in nature. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. To fear him and to delight in him is the internally tangible. What is he telling us? He's telling us today that there is much more that we have to do at a personal level towards the cause of Christianity, not to you alone, but even to your neighbor. And I want us to take our works, for example. The practical things we do for God or for other human beings are always analog. When you come to church, there is somebody who greets you. There is somebody who can hug you. There's somebody who smiles at you. Hello, hello. Buona sifiwe. Buona sifiwe. There is even somebody who, when you're carrying a child, would carry your baby. Even as you walk into church. They, those are tangible. They are tangible in character. Praise God. And even the Sabbath observance is tangible. It's about fellowship. And fellowship is about meeting. And meeting is about being together. Is somebody hearing me? Buona sifiwe. Buona sifiwe. So to observe the Sabbath day involves several specific analog, tangible practices like resting and worshipping. Those are practical things that you do. You rest. In other words, if you have a shop, you close it and you come to church. If you have business, you shut it down. If you, are, you work, you don't go to work on that day. Somebody hearing me? If you have a child who goes to school, she doesn't go to school on that day. Hallelujah. Amen. Sabbath observance is tangible. By the way, you know people play around with Sabbath observance. I remember my daughter when she was in primary school. And when she got to standard eight, the headmistress decided that eight is a critical class there is nothing like no Sabbath. Do you what? Every child must come from Saturday and on Sunday there would be half day. I had already negotiated with her that my children would not go to school on Saturday and she had agreed. Suddenly now it was a decree. And she told me if I don't want, I can take my child. Where do you take your child in Saturday 8? So I told her, look, this first term, let us gauge the child on performance. If she does well without coming to school, then let her be. Because her not coming on Sabbath day is still giving her good marks. She went through what my daughter was getting. She was an average child. Because I serve a living God, I want to tell you the first term of her standard eight class, my daughter was number one. Amen with very high marks. The only thing that saddened me is that was the end of her number one. She never became number one again. 
But you know, when she became number one and I went to school, uh, the next time she said she has pulled the carpet from under my feet. She can continue going to Sabbath. So God made her number one so that his glory would be seen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Resting, we are resting from activities. And it is a choice you make. Nobody will ken you. Nobody will follow you up. Nobody will flog you. You will decide, I'm not going. Nobody will bother you. Even God will just look at you making those decisions because it is a choice you've made. But remember, those tangibles is a manifestation of the intangible. Is somebody hearing me? So if you love the Lord your God and you fear him and you delight in his commandment, we will see it in your tangibles. Hallelujah. Amen. We will see it in your tangibles. It will not be hidden. So you cannot tell me you fear the Lord, you love the Lord, you delight in his ways. Uh, and on a Sabbath day, you are here on Saturday morning and in the afternoon you are up to your business. Friday evening passes by like any other day. And we are told that Sabbath begins from sunset to sunset. You sunset, that to you is a story. And then you tell me that you fear the Lord. And you delight in his commandments. Buona sifiwe. Buona sifiwe. Sabbath. Sabbath day can never be a virtual experience. Never. COVID came by because the devil is struggling to alienate us. He is working hard to alienate us. So he brings issues to keep us away from each other so that we are in our own cocoons. But thank God he gave us victory over COVID. So today there is no reason to stay at home on a Sabbath day. Walk to church because the Lord needs your tangib tangibility. I don't know if that is English. Is somebody hearing me? Somebody needs to greet your hand. Somebody needs your hug. Somebody needs your smile. Somebody just needs your presence. All these seats are for us to sit on. If we all went virtual, why all these seats? Is somebody hearing me? Buona sifiwe. Buona sifiwe. Love God and love your neighbor. You cannot love your neighbor virtually can you love your neighbor virtually that is why long distance relation is a problem but bring the children i talk to the children hi 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 the children will always end up asking you daddy when are you coming because they want to feel you when i see feel now you you are practicing long distance relationship with god how how now is somebody hearing me? True worship. True, true worship is in fellowship. Tell your neighbor true worship is in fellowship. We find true worship in the experience of fellowship with real human beings in the church from Sabbath morning to Sabbath evening. Hallelujah. Long time ago, we used to even have Vespers, Friday evening. We would trod to church. Today, it's long gone. It doesn't matter anymore. It's too much to come to church on Friday, first pass. But the Lord tells you Friday is a preparation day. It means the whole day you're preparing, and when the sun sets, you're heading to his place of worship already. But we don't prepare anymore. We don't. It doesn't even bother us. It doesn't even cross our minds. Why? Because you're digital. The Lord wants us to go back into analog. Hallelujah. Read with me Hebrews 10.25 which says, Let us not give, us, give up meeting together as some of, 
Some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another to keep meeting together. I am encouraging you today, if you will forget, I pray that my voice will continue ringing in your mind and pricking your heart when it comes to Sabbath day. Tomorrow is our Friday. Start preparing so that by evening you are already set on Saturday morning. You are all marching to church singing praises because you have already prepared. You will never have any reason to be late for church because you are already prepared. Is somebody hearing me? While it is possible to join a, a, a digital worship service, and I agree, even now we have people who are watching us digitally and they are coming from far and wide. By the way, I've realized New Life Church, you are a very popular church. I will start watching you consistently. Hey. Yani, I'm getting messages. I'm seeing you. New life. I'm asking, but in where you are, see, mkona, 10 days. Why are you watching new life? He says, me, my church is new life. Pastor, you have a lot of digital members. Tell them to bring tithe here. <laughs> I'm telling them. <laughs> All over, I keep receiving messages back. I said, "What? Well, I have preached in churches, but I have not received personal messages of watching me like this time. And I said, New Life, you must be a truly popular church. I think your programs are uplifting. Keep up the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The digital worship service via internet is okay. But the ultimate worship experience Find fulfillment in analog commitments. You know the way you're sitting next to each other? Now, the person who is digital, Saizi, Nikisema, turn to your neighbor and greet. So they will greet TV. Is somebody hearing me? You know they cannot even hear your laughter. And yet even when you laugh, it gives the warmth. Buona sifiwe. So it is okay, and we are, not, we are not saying digital is not right. Because you can find yourself in the hospital, you'll watch digital. So we thank God for digital. Circumstances can make you go digital. But please don't go digital because you say, I will hear, see, I will hear the sermon in my, the comfort of my home. The devil is confusing your mind. On Sabbath day, you're not in hospital. Trek to church. Amen. Amen. I long for the day, Pastor, where on Sabbath day, even the sick will be brought to the altar. Because the presence of God will bring healing. Amen. So it's like that chemi chemi where the, the person who was paralyzed for 20 years could not jump into and he jumped into. So that Sabbath day becomes a chemi chemi of healing, both physical, emotional, and spiritual. The whole day I've been battered, but on Sabbath day I come into the church and I find peace and love and I go out a refreshing person, ready to face another week. Hallelujah. I long for the day when you will not stay at home because you have a headache. That you'll say, despite my headache, I am going into the house of God because in the presence of God, in the community of my brothers, and as we raise up our voices as a team, our prayers as are answered, and I will receive my healing. So you have no reason to sit back and say, my back is aching. Those seats are bad. You're saying, I'm going there because in the community of Christians, as we all raise up our voices, healing comes down and I will get my healing. Hallelujah. Analog. It is participation with real people in physical places. On Saturday, make it a point. Make it a decision no matter what. You are going to church. I find a lot of people who say, ah, there's too much worship on TV. There's no need to go to church anyway, anymore. That is how the devil is alienating you. When you look at the lion and he's hunting and he wants to get an animal, a prey, he 
focuses on one prey and sets the prey aside because he knows when they are in a heart, they are safe. They are encouraging each other. They are protecting one another. But when he's able to separate you and you are alone, then he can attack you as he wants, even as you think that all is well. All is not well when you have been separated to be watching services only on TV. Come to the heart because with the heart, there is protection. With the heart, there is warmth. With the heart, there is the spirit of togetherness. Buana asifiwe. Buana asifiwe. No virtual reality can replace or surpass a human touch. A human hug can uh, surpass a helping hand, uh, can surpass a word of I will pray for you. It is well. I am with you. I will visit you. No virtual meeting can surpass that. So on Saturday, come, come, come to church physically. Is somebody hearing me? Buana sifiwe. Buana sifiwe. My brothers and sisters, tell me, how do you celebrate foot washing virtually? Tell me how. Explain to me in a language that I can understand. Somebody hearing me. But somebody will say, I'll watch virtually. Then the day of foot washing, I, am, I come. Then you come as a stranger in your own church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Buona sifiwe. And that foot washing was instituted by Jesus Christ. So if any one of us also misses foot washing, you are actually missing out on what God himself directed his disciples to do. And he said that by that, we will do what? We'll do what? Buona sefewe. Amen. He will be remembered as we wash our feet. Buona sifiwe. Hello. So what am I trying to do here? What is it that I'm talking about here? I am trying to emphasize on tangible faith. Faith that works. Amen. Do you know even the practice of prayer and fasting is tangible? You cannot do it virtually. We oftentimes do it virtually. But it is a tangible aspect of Christianity. Our faith in God always has an analog dimension in which it becomes vis visible. So when you have faith in God, you will fear him and delight in his and his commandments are two. Love God and love your neighbor. If you love your neighbor, then you will have fellowship. But if you don't love your neighbor, then you'll be selfish to yourself. You don't care whether you've gone to church. You will come to church sometimes and not even mingle with people. While we human beings can do all kinds of things virtually, and I know we can, our relationship with God and the expression of our spiritual walk with Jesus can never be reduced to virtual reality. Never. Because he touches the lives of men through us. You cannot touch and encourage another person virtually. It has to be tangible. Amen. 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 It has to be tangible. Relationships must be tangible. Where relationships have turned not being tangible, they are falling apart. Consider all the blessings that real life in real life, that analog acts can bring our way. Bring the blessings, and one of it is bringing the blessings of eternal life. When we are together, our words encourage us. Our touch 
reminds the other person, you're not alone in this. I am with you in it. Hallelujah. The sharing of food, the experience of hospitality, virtual worship can easily cause the potential loss of personal communication and communal experience, which we cannot allow to happen among us. The Lord has told us to love your neighbors yourself. So coming to church, one of the purposes of coming to church is to meet with one another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christianity is about shared love. If there are people among us today who honestly in your heart you have discovered that this tangible aspect of Christianity has not been quite a priority. You may have loved God, but you forgot loving your neighbor, which brings in fellowship. And you're making a decision now that, Father, from today, I will prioritize fellowship in the house of God. If you're here and in your heart, you truly are making that decision that you'll prioritize. You will go virtual when it is really necessary. But you will come to church as a decision that you're making today. That even on Sabbath day, you're already planning how you will be in church. Lift your hand towards heaven. If you're making that decision, that Father... I will enhance my tangible aspects of my Christian life. And may the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. As the prayer team comes forward, I pray that we will constantly stir up one another to love God and to do good works. As the prayer team comes forward, I pray that God will continue revealing unto us what true love is. I pray that we will all be human and start showing the love of God and lifting up Jesus as the person who has supreme love. I pray that we shall all the time be reminded of the absolute necessity to be engaged in the analog world with acts of love and kindness. I pray. I pray that we oftentimes are too addicted to our devices and the online world. But from today, we will serve to use those de these de devices the knowledge that the word of God is giving us. I pray that we will be set free so that we can live by serving others. I pray that none of us will neglect meeting together. That though the pandemic accelerated the isolation that we are struggling out of today, I am confident that the Lord will help us to reunite again as a church and none, not even one, will be found missing out in church in the comfort of your house that you're watching the services from TV. I pray that we will have true connection. That nothing can replace the importance and blessings of face-to-face -face interactions. May the Lord bless you all. Amen. Amen. Now it's a moment of prayer, and uh, uh, we are going to assume uh, postures, O Lord, that 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 that, that uh, uh, you'll be very comfortable to 
go before the Lord. Uh, up front we will kneel and I'll pray then my brother will, will conclude. Let us believe and pray. Most gracious and holy Father in heaven, the Lord be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the mighty name of your son Jesus Christ we come. How we thank you, Lord, that our burdens indeed are lifted at Calvary, O Lord. At Calvary, O Lord, you give unto us more grace, that even as our burdens grow greater, O Lord, you grant unto us more grace. At Calvary, O Lord, when we are afflicted, O Lord, Father, you grant unto us more mercy, O Lord. At Calvary, O Lord, when our trials grow greater, O Lord, you grant unto us more peace, O Lord. And Father, at Calvary, O Lord, when we lack strength, O Lord, even as our labors increase, you grant unto us more strength, O Lord. Dear Heavenly Master, we come unto you just as we are, and we thank you, O Lord, that even at Calvary, we receive the forgiveness of sin, O Lord, through your Son, Jesus Christ. May that blood that was shed at Calvary wash us and cleanse us, O Lord. Behold, your people have come to your holy church even this evening. Many have presented prayer requests, O Lord. And in this prayer request, O Lord, many have different burdens, O Lord, that they are bringing unto you, O Lord. Father, we ask that may you meet them at your, their points of needs, O Lord. And that, Father, not their will, but your will be done. Perchance there are, there are those, O Lord, who are ailing in sicknesses, O Lord, we ask for healing. Perchance there are those, O Lord, who have lost their loved ones, Father, we ask for comfort. Perchance there are those, O Lord, who lack the amenities of this, that this life afford. Father, we ask, O Lord, that you, who is our provider, will extend your hand to them, O Lord, and that, Father, they will great, get your, 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 your marvelous grace, O Lord, even extended to them, O Lord. Thank you so much even for the online team, O Lord, that are watching uh, through the service, O Lord. Father, we have your, your son, Don, who is asking, O Lord, that, Father, you would reveal yourself and, in fact, manifest your Holy Spirit in him, O Lord. Father, we ask for a double portion of your Holy Spirit to him, O Lord, and also to us, O Lord, that, Father, we will have your Spirit, O Lord, that teaches us, O Lord, to fear you. We will have your Spirit that teaches us, O Lord, to obey you, O Lord. And that, Father, in the intangibles, O Lord, that we have learned today, Father, we will manifest the tangibles, O Lord, that, Father, your name be glorified even in our midst, O Lord. Especially, we also dedicate Mary, who has also been watching on, online, O Lord, and she has a silent prayer, prayer, O Lord. Father, I will ask that may you manifest yourself unto her, O Lord, that in a special way, in her own silent prayer, O Lord, that you would wax profound, O Lord, and that, Father, she will see Jesus Christ crucified even on the cross, O Lord. Thank you so much for allowing us to talk to you this evening, O Lord. Many uh, are troubled, O Lord, even with the Sabbath worship, O Lord, and some cannot just make it. Some have jobs, O Lord, that uh, really desire their time, O Lord, during the Sabbath days, O Lord. How we commit them unto your hands. Some have burdens, O Lord, that even at school time, O Lord, they have lectures, O Lord, even on Sabbath. How we commit them into a special... Uh, how we commit them unto your able hands, O Lord, that may you visit with them, O Lord, and that, Father, may you go ahead of them even to make a decision, Lord, that they will obey you rather than obeying man, O Lord. Draw us closer to you. Keep us within your faults, loving you, serving you, faithful and trusting you unto the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We pray and do believe in his name. Let us believe and pray. <coughs> Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We praise you, Jehovah. What is your name, King of Kings? What is your name, creator of the world, creator of the universe? What is your name, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? We come to you this evening. We pray for our church in a special way. We pray for the worldwide church 
Oh God, we need you now more than ever. Father God, Jehovah, we bring requests before you, oh God. We've come to you for nine days. We've put our prayer requests in the prayer request box, oh God. We pray that you read them. We pray that you answer the prayers. We pray that you bring healing to each and every request. We pray that you bring provision to each and every request, O oh God. Meet every prayer request, every family that is represented here, O oh God, that is watching online. Heal them, bless them this moment, O oh God. I come to you in a special way with the prayer request for the worldwide church. I pray for the 541 people groups in 18 countries of the South African Indian Ocean Division, O oh God. I pray and plead that they may know your biblical truth. Father God, I pray that you may show us how to meet the practical and spiritual needs of the refugees. May our church be known for our love of all people, no matter who they are or where they come from. Oh God, our Lord and Savior, you've showed us how to love everybody, the Jews and the Gentiles. We pray, oh God, that we may not discriminate our neighbors. We've forgotten how to love our neighbors, oh God. Show us how to be practical. We ask you to raise up the urban missionaries to plant churches for the 806 people in the 20 countries of the inter-European division. May your word be spread in that division, O God. We pray and raise up the army of workers to plant churches for the 948 people groups in the 38 countries of the inter-American division. Father God, please teach us to proclaim our fundamental church beliefs with clarity, with creativity, with biblical authenticity. Oh God, the devil has swayed us. We do not follow our beliefs, oh God. We've lost the good news that you gave us of your salvation, oh God. We do not keep the Sabbath as is expected of us, O oh God. Forgive us our sins. Father God, we've lost the study of your word, the scripture. O oh God, enable us to study your scripture that we may share it to others, O oh God. That we may share the word to our neighbor in truth. O oh God, we pray that you may show us to love one another. Father, you've showed us what love is by dying on the cross through your son, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, you did that for the church that is the bride, O oh God. And we know that your soon return is imminent, O oh God. You are preparing, O oh God, to come and meet her. O oh God, redeem us. May we walk in your righteousness. May we walk in the light, O oh God, that shines upon a hill to every soul on this planet. May we know our beliefs you've taught us, O oh God to care for the less privileged. Lord, please prepare young people to plant churches for the 789 people groups in the nine countries of the North American division. We ask you to prepare volunteers to serve the 70 people groups in the Israel field. Oh God, they are facing hard times. Strengthen their faith this moment, O oh God. Hear their prayers. Father, we beseech you. We pray, O oh God, 
that you may renew the faith in our church, the faith of fellowship, the faith of being with one another, O oh God. The devil has found ways to separate us, O oh God. May the blood that was shed on the cross bond us now. May it bring us together. May we look each other with kind spirits. Care for one another, O oh God. The devil has taught us not to care for uh, those around us. But Father, we seek your guidance. We pray the Holy Spirit may bind us the cords of love this evening. We pray for our church, O oh God, new life, SDA church. We pray for the leadership in our church. We pray for the pastors. We pray for the ministers, the speakers, the elders, the deacons, the servants who are dedicated in this church. Hear their prayers, O oh God. Answer their prayers, Father. We praise your name for hearing our prayer this evening. Glory be to you. We pray, believing and trusting through our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I come before you again with a humble plea. If there be anyone among us this evening who in your hearts you desire to fear the Lord and delight in his commandments, because unless you refine the intangible, the tangible cannot happen. If there be anyone among us who is saying this evening, God help me, help me, anoint me, and give me the ability to truly be a person who fears the Lord and delights in his commandments. Could you come forward for a word of prayer? Come forward for a word of prayer. Come forward for a word of prayer. God bless you. This evening, do we have any guests? Yes, I have a guest pastor. I have a guest, I have a friend. You came with a friend. Where is a friend? Please come forward, friend, also. Thank you. God bless you. Anybody else who came with a friend? Amen. 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 Please come forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else who came with a friend? Amen. Paddy. Amen. Where's the friend? I thought you had a friend. Paddy, where's your friend? Paddy, please come forward. Amen. Please come forward. 
Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Right here, my brother. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Pastor is waiting for you. Anybody else? Yes, and my friend came with a friend. She is also my friend, so stand here. And she came with a friend. Please come forward. Please come forward. Hallelujah. Please come forward, darling. Come forward. Anybody else who came with a friend? Amen. 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 Where are you? Amen. Please come forward. Come forward. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is good. Thank you. Thank you for coming. We are waiting for you. <laughs> Please come forward. Sister Ruth, where are you? Wow. God bless you. A friend to my friend, Mary. I'm introducing her already. Mary. Mary. Yes. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to our Father. Okay, so Rhoda, uh, my sister Rhoda begins to get a score. Uh, is it two for an Adventist? It's two, two points. If she's an Adventist, five points. Five points for, for Sister Rhoda. Sister Rhoda Opembe. This is my sister, this one. Oh. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, let, let me get the names of those who brought visitors. We want to take your record. My brother, what is your yes. name? Kevin. Brother Kevin, five or two? Two. Uh, uh, brother Kevin, two. Two. Two points. Where's the other one? This My sister, Sister Ruth. Uh, five or two? You brought one. Adventist, non-Adventist. Five. Sister Ruth. Uh, Ruth, you know we must get your other name. Ruth Kirui. Ruth Kirui, five marks. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jehovah. Okay. The other person, the other person who brought a guest? Yes, my sister. Roslyn. Roslyn who? Roslyn Awino, two or five? Two. Roslyn Awino, two points. The best evangelist at the end of the 10 days of prayer is a beneficiary of prayers from myself and the preacher for a whole year. Can you imagine Sister Milson praying for you and telling God, please remember that brother. So, let's grab these blessings when they are still available. Thank you. Thank you very much for being encouraged to bring along your friends. Yes. Who else brought a friend? Who else? We had friends this way. Who else brought a friend? Yes, my elder, you have been doing well. Come again. You have a friend? He, uh, oh. Your friend is comfortable there. Uh, we your have friend. a gift for your friend. It's is your friend able there. to come? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please stand up and greet the friend on our behalf. Lady, stand up and greet the friend on our behalf. Hallelujah. And, Amen. And you will take this book to your friend. God bless you and take the book. Amen. Thank you. Glory be to God. Any other person who brought a friend? You are Henry. Amen. Henry. Remind me yes. of him. Uh, Sister Ruth, Henry, uh, Sister Ruth, I'm losing you. Elder Henry Magoro, five or two? Five. No, he has, been, he has been Amen. on your list, so you, 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 you need to tally his Amen. points. Amen. He has 15 Amen. already. God bless you. 
God bless you. God you. bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much, my God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. I haven't shaken your hands. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Any other person you. who brought a friend May along? Lord bless you. For the women, let me Any other? Talk. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you for bringing a friend. Thank you so much. You were brought by a friend. Yeah. No, uh, where is yeah. the friend okay. who brought? What is his name? Yes. Dennis brought you. Uh, Dennis who? Dennis Akuru, five marks. Or four marks? Two. Dennis Akuru, two marks. Any other friend who brought another one? Wow, glory be to God. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor. Among us who desire to have a walk with Christ, but you have not been baptized, because the beginning of this walk is baptism, and you desire baptism, I will pray that I'll meet you in that room. I'd like to pray with you even as you make that decision. So while we all are sitting back and you feel that you want to refresh in your walk with God through baptism, kindly, we meet the Vestas, Vestus, Vestri, the Vestri, behind the tent. And those who are online, please drop a message on, uh, in regards to the decision that you have made. We will also... On Facebook or YouTube, we will be happy, happy to walk with you through that decision that you have made. God bless you. Pastor will pray for us, and as he has said, yes, I will pray for you all year round. All year round, I'll be mentioning your names in prayer. God bless you. Shall we pray? Loving Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise your name and just worship you for the blessings of this moment of the 10 days of prayers. Thank you, Lord, for guiding your apostles to wait, to wait for the promise of the Father. As your children have been coming this 10 days, now the ninth day, to be blessed of you, to seek your face, to, to be found of you. And we are grateful, Lord, that you are blessing us as we have come. Blessed us with your word that has empowered our faith in you, that has encouraged our faith in you, that has inspired our faith in you. And we thank you, Lord, for, the, for our faith that is growing in you on account of your word. For... Our faith comes by hearing and hearing nothing but the word and we praise your name for the word we thank you dear lord for the word you gave us today we praise your name for your servant and we pray dear lord that this word will remain to be a blessing for us dear lord your children have come and as we have come we have come along with our friends i pray for your blessings upon each one and even of us that came to thy sanctuary this night, that you bless each one and every one of us. And not only those ones who are here physically, but even your children who are worshiping together with us virtually because of various circumstances. I pray that you bless them as well. But Lord, I pray for your additional blessings upon those ones who went an extra mile to bring along their friends to thy house of prayer to bring their friends to you, to bring your, their friends to the audience of your word. May you bless them in a special way. And Lord, we thank you and praise your name in a special way for the friends who are invited and accepted to come in your presence, to come in the audience of your word and to come to your, pre to your very presence. I pray, Lord, for these friends that you bless them. They acted like David said, I was happy. When, and I was glad when I was told, let us go to the house of the Lord. May the spirit of David remain in them the rest of their lives. May they be blessed with you now and forever, dear Lord. As your servant, Milson, continues to pray for all of us that have come up front. 
for the prayer request that we have come for. May you bless her. May you bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Our oh, Father, there is none like you. There has never been. I just want to glorify your name. I just want to magnify you. I just want to give you honor. And we bow in your presence. You humbly we come to your throne, filled with thanksgiving in our hearts because of what you're doing among us and in us. Your children have been stirred deep in their hearts and have desired of one thing, that they truly, Jehovah, will delight in your commandments, that they truly in their lives will fear you, will honor you, will glorify you, will magnify you, will prioritize you, that that is the decision that they have made this evening. I want to commit each one of them into their hands and pray that you will personally take charge of their lives and give them the strength and the ability through the incoming and the infilling of the Holy Spirit that they will be granted the desires of their hearts that from now henceforth they will have a closer walk with you they will have a closer relationship with you because we know that when that happens then all other things shall be added unto them everything they've desired in their hearts father will come to pass the mountains will be leveled the valleys will be filled and the crooked paths will be made straight we know, Jehovah, that when the devil will come to them, you will raise a standard because they have chosen in their hearts, they have decided in their lives that they are going to fear you and to delight in your commandments. May they leave this altar filled with the power of the Holy Spirit that their life will not be the same again. And because of this decision they have made, there are many things that they desire. And he told us that if we seek first the kingdom of God, all these things shall be added unto you. If there be any one of them who is sick, may they receive healing. If there be any one of them who is facing financial challenges, may you bring helpers their way. May you bring, may you bring providence their way, O oh God. If there be any one of them whose family is falling apart, may you bring reconciliation, O oh Jehovah Lord. If there be anyone, Jehovah Lord, whose children have gone asunder, may you restore the fruit of their wombs for you promised the fruits of our wombs will be first and not last jehovah lord whatever struggles have come their way i pray for victory i pray for victory i pray father for victory over their lives for those who have been struggling with bible study and prayer may they from now have the power to approach your throne with thanksgiving and praise because you have given them victory in the mighty name of jesus i have prayed